Hello, how are you doing? It is a new year, and there are lots of new books being published in 2024 to look forward to. I have gone through and picked out 10 that I personally am most anticipating. I'm going to discuss why I'm so eager to read these new books. Some of them are by authors I've read and enjoyed before, so naturally I'm interested in their new ones. Others are by authors I've been meaning to read, or their exciting sounding debuts, or they have covers which are so good that I'm really intrigued to see what is inside. I'm going to discuss these in order of UK publication date, but of course publications can change and uh, can vary from region to region and in different countries. And this isn't a completely comprehensive list of everything that is coming out in the new year. So if there are other books that you know about that are coming out, I'd love to hear about those uh, in the comments below. To start off with, uh, there is Day by Michael Cunningham. This is being published in January uh, 18th, uh, but I know it's already um, come out in the US. And uh, this is about a family in Brooklyn uh, over a single day, but over the course of three different years. And we start in 2019, going into 2020 and 2021. So of course, over the course of the, the recent pandemic and how this affects their lives and their relationships um, with each other over time. And uh, Michael Cunningham has this way of writing about time and our personal connections with each other and how our own personal ambitions change uh, over a, a period of years um, that I, I feel like this could be a really emotional and striking story. Uh, I talked about in a video a little while ago about how his novel The Hours was one of the most influential books in my life and one of my favorite books ever. I, I feel like his other books of his that I've read um, haven't hit quite the same note, but I'm always intrigued to see what he's written next. And um, since this is about such recent times, I'm interested to see how he handles this subject matter. On February 1st, Parasol Against the Axe by Helen Oyemi is going to be published. This is an advanced copy of the novel, so this is what the finished cover will look like. And first off, what drew me to this book is the title. I mean, what a strange and, and great title for a novel, and it makes me so interested in what it's about. So the story uh, involves a woman whose estranged friend invites her for a hen weekend, a bachelorette's weekend in Prague, and um, she's not really expected to accept this invitation, but she does, and she goes along, and there they encounter um, someone else from their past that calls into question their personal history and relationship with each other, but it's also about the city of Prague in general and people that they meet there and things that happen to them there. And Helen Oyemi is an author I've read before and I've really enjoyed uh, her short story collection, uh, What Is Not Yours Is Not Yours. Other of her books I, I haven't necessarily like loved or really gotten into all that much because um, she's someone that writes about language and ideas in such an interesting way, uh, but sometimes like her characters and stories can um, get a bit like off kilter or I just like aren't able to follow them or understand what's going on. But she is such an original writer that I'm always intrigued to see what she's written next. And this book in particular, because I personally had this experience in Prague, uh, which I wouldn't many many years ago and while I was traveling around there I just bumped into this person who said oh you're Eric right you're you're Eric and this was long before I did anything like online or stuff that that people would recognize me from but she called me by my name and I was like oh hi and I didn't recognize this woman at all and I was just like oh hi sorry I I don't know who 
I, I don't remember you. And I, and she just looked at me and she said, oh, but you are Eric, right? And I said, well, yeah, I am. And she said, oh, yeah, I thought so. And and, and then walked away. And then that, that, that was such a strange experience and made me wonder, like, oh, who was this person? I keep thinking about it, but I just can't place who she was. Um, so, yeah, it's it's a city that I have this, like, odd experience with and um, memory of. And, and so I'm interested to see how that plays out in the experience of the characters in this story. On February 15th, the debut novel The List of Suspicious Things by Jenny Godfrey is going to be published. And this book is almost 500 pages long, but I've started reading it already. And the narrative voice is so immediately engaging. I can't wait to read more. So the story follows a girl in 1979 in Yorkshire, England, who is becoming aware of larger things that are happening in a region and in the country. Margaret Thatcher has just been elected as prime minister, but also the Yorkshire Ripper has killed a number of people. And I'm not sure if how familiar people are outside of the UK with the Yorkshire Ripper, um, but this was a serial killer that targeted a number of young women. And so um, people were terrified of this and it had such an effect on communities of and women in particular that were terrified that they might be next. So it had such an impact on people's like mental health and, and lives at the time. And the girl in this story wants to find out who the Yorkshire Ripper actually is. And so she goes on this quest of discovery, um, but it's also about her interactions with her family and her coming of age story. And like I said, yeah, the, it's it's so good so far um, that, yeah, this is really exciting. On February 20th, there is the novel About Uncle by Rebecca Gist translated from the French by Jordan Stump. And this is a story about a disabled veteran who isn't able to entirely care for himself. So his niece and nephew assist him in the day-to-day -day tasks of his life. And it's about what happens to family relationships when there is uh, this dependency upon one another, especially when uh, the person um, who is dependent uh, acts out a lot um, and isn't always the easiest person to get along with. And about the the strange intimacies that, that form when there are these these relationships and these very tight knit um, relationships um, within a, a household, and what happens to personal ambition um, when uh, members of your family depend upon you. On February twenty second, there is the novel. Hours by Philip B. Williams, and what a striking image this is, isn't it? This is quite an epic story, almost 600 pages long. It is set in the mid-1800s and is about a conjure woman who is able to annihilate southern plantations and rescue the enslaved people there to take them to a haven which is magically concealed from people from the outside. But when she starts to encounter problems with her powers, uh, people are able to start invading this community and the people that live there start to wonder if they've exchanged one form of bondage for another. So uh, this book has received some endorsements um, from some great authors I've enjoyed reading before, like Britt Bennett, uh, who says it's a beautifully written and ambitious epic about the complexity of freedom. Williams crafts an expansive original world filled with characters who linger long after the final page. Uh, and also Caitlin Greenidge uh, says of this book, it's a jewel of a novel, a deeply felt exploration of the strengthening tie and broken cords of kith and kin under the weight of complicated histories. And uh, Williams um, has published poetry um, before, um, which has won awards, but this is his first novel. On March 7th, there is the novel Clear by Karis Davies. And I don't know if you can see, but uh, it's quite clever on this proof. Uh, the, the title is actually clear, but if you change it, you can um, see it in different lights. Uh, so this is what 
what the finished cover will look like. And this novel is also set in the mid 1800s, but uh, this time is set on a remote Scottish island and a man that lives there in uh, complete isolation. Uh, but uh, one day uh, another man arrives on the island and he's been charged with evicting this man from the island so um, that the, the island can change um, to sheep farmland. And they don't speak the same language, but gradually they form a relationship and connection with each other over time. And Karis Davies writes in a way that is so compressed, but is so impactful. I read her novel West a number of years ago, and that novel was excellent, and I've been wanting to read more of her work. On April 4th, Neil Mukherjee's new novel, Choice, is going to be published. This is a story with three distinct but connected narratives. Uh, one is about a publisher who's at war with the industry that he works within. One is about an academic, and one is about a family in rural India. So it's about the, the drama of each of their tales, but also about the personal responsibility that we have and about how our choices can affect others in ways that we might not immediately perceive and about moral responsibility in the modern world. And I've loved Neil Mukherjee's novels that I've read. Uh, his novel, The Lives of Others and A State of Freedom are so excellent and were Booker listed in the past, so this new one might get some prize attention. On April 11th, a novel is going to be published that I've been anticipating for so long, Hagstone by Sinead Gleason. This story takes place uh, on a wild and rugged island that's very isolated and about a female artist um, who lives there, uh, but also how there's a commune of women on this island who are very mysterious and are made up of a collective of people that have traveled there from all over the world to, to live um, in peace. And they invite this woman um, to create an art piece to celebrate their history. Um, but what she, when she gets involved with working with them, um, she discovers things about her own personal past and the history of this, this commune of women that are quite surprising um, and intriguing. And what a wonderful cover it has. Now, I've been looking forward to this for so long because I've been familiar with um, Sinead Gleason's work. Um, she's an editor that has created these excellent collections of uh, Irish women's writing um, that have introduced me to the work of so many great writers that I hadn't encountered before, and I've gone on to read other books by them. Um, but also, I loved her memoir, Constellations, um, which came out a while ago, and um, in the year that it came out, it was one of the best books that I read that year. Um, so she she writes about um, art and uh, individual um, responsibility and uh, and our motivations in life in such a powerful way. And I expect that to be reflected in this new novel. Also on April 11th, there is James by Percival Everett. And this is his retelling of Mark Twain's The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, um, but from the perspective of Jim. And I love these retellings of classic stories from another character's perspectives. And I'm so intrigued to see how Everett handles this story uh, about a man who was enslaved and um, who overhears that he's going to be sold. Um, so he uh, retreats um, to uh, an island to try to contemplate what to do. And there he encounters Huckleberry Finn and they go on their famous adventure down the Mississippi River. And so, yeah, I'm just so intrigued to see what he he makes of this story and how he reinvents um, this character and this classic tale. And so I am planning to um, reread The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn um, before April um, and reading this book and his take on it. So it's fresh in my mind. So let me know if you're interested in doing that as well. But uh, also really excitingly, um, the, the publisher um, Mantle is going to be republishing a 
number of works um, by Percival Everett um, in the UK around the release of this new book. Um, and I loved Percival Everett's novels, The Trees, so much um, that, yeah, I've been wanting to read more of his work. And finally, on April 16th, there is the new novel Crooked Seeds by Karen Jennings. And this is a story about uh, a woman in Cape Town whose family home is repossessed by the government. And when that happens, a number of buried bodies are discovered on these grounds. And so it's an investigation into her family history and what occurred on this property in the past and about the, the consequences of apartheid. And uh, but also about her own personal ambitions in life have been stymied um, by um, the, the circumstances of um, both her, her family and her personal life life and the country that she lives in. And uh, Karen Jennings' novel, An Island, um, was the like surprise discovery in um, the, the year in that uh, it was listed for the Booker Prize. And I've been so interested to read more of her work because I thought that novel was so striking. So those are some of the books that I'm looking forward to in the new year. Uh, I'd love to know um, if you are interested in reading any of these um, books as well or if there are other new titles that you are really looking forward to, um, please let me know about those in the comments below. I hope you're doing well, and I look forward to reading and discussing some of these books with you in the new year. Bye-bye.